Since 1975, PNB Intermodal has been servicing the transportation industry where core values, service, and the PNB advantage are more than just punchlines. Some may wonder what makes PNB the best in the industry, a place where we measure pedigree by the salt stains etched on the boots and backs of those driven to keep you rolling. At PNB, success is no accident, and we intend to keep it that way. My name is Kenneth Clair with PNB Intermodal, and this is a basic FMCSA procedure. The first thing you want to do is inspect your seven way for any broken pins or loose parts. Second, grab your glad hands and make sure your bulkhead fittings and glad hands are not loose. Then you're going to hook up your air, but you're only going to release the brakes. So my valve is closed, so it's only sending air to the service side. Emergency side. I mean, yeah, emergency side. Now I'm going to hook up my lights. After everything's hooked up, you're going to proceed to your left-hand corner. You're always going to start in the same area, so you always go through the same procedure so you don't miss anything. Here we go. Come to your push pin. You're going to check your latch, make sure it's attached, and make sure your push pin functions properly. I'm also going to check my light and my cables and make sure everything's working properly. We see the lights on. We're going to proceed. Check the grid area. Make sure you have no leaks or broken lines. Check your cables. Check for any cracked welds as you go. Then we're gonna grease. Go ahead and grease the push pin. There sometime is a grease cert here. If there's not a grease cert, you grease the push pin here and you slide it back and forth to make sure it's loose and well lubricated. Then you proceed. As you're walking, you're checking the frame. You're checking for any damages you might see. You get to your leg. Check the bolts. I always touch every bolt to verify that they're not loose. And there's also the cross brace bolt. You can touch the bolt, but you can also kick the cross brace to hear if it's loose or not. And you're going to grease here. There's two certs on every leg. What's One, a grease cert? This is a grease cert. This is where you're going to grease your leg, and everything that needs grease is going to have the same, same type of cert. Aye, aye. Then we're going to check the functionality of the leg. High gear and low gear. Right now we're in high gear. It works. Come out to low gear. You can see that the leg is moving, telling me that it's working properly. Leg is moving. Check. Pull your documents. And you want to match your registration when you get to the back with your license plate. We're going to check for any cracked welds that could be on the legs or leg boxes. As you're walking, you're going to look at the cross members and inspect the chassis as a whole as you're walking. Verify the lights working. Continue to check the chassis. Looking for any cracked in cross members or in the frame or any other damage you might see. Then we're going to make our way to the front axle. When we get to the front axle, you're also going to grease six spots per, chat, per axle. You have one in the S cam on the inner, I mean on the outer bushing. You have one here on the inner bushing, and you have one on the slack adjuster. You have the same thing on both sides, and it's the same for both axles. We're going to inspect. The radius rod, make sure it's not loose. Check the leaf spring, make sure there's no cracks. A lot of times you'll have the cracks in the center or you'll have a leaf completely missing. While we're here, I'm going to go ahead and measure my push rods or mark my push rod for stroke. Get on this side, Wes. To do that, when marking the push rod to check for travel, they want to use a flat edge 
slide it down to the push rod and go ahead and make your mark. That way you know exactly where the mark is. It's going to be the same for all wheels. We're going to get back to actually checking the stroke in just a second. So I've made my mark. Now I'm going to slide under the chassis. And I'm going to inspect my brake shoes for any cracks and to verify that the wear is over a quarter inch. If it's at a quarter inch or below, the brake shoes have to be changed. At that point, it's going to need to be repaired. Then we're going to look inside with a flashlight at our wheel seal. Verify we see no leaks, no oil. It has to be reflective is the rule. I see no issue here. We're going to do the same on all four wheels. Okay, so we're going to check the same thing on all four sides. The brake shoe is not under quarter inch. There's no leaking wheel seal. Now I do hear the valve is leaking under here. If the valve's leaking, that's going to require additional repair. As we're under here, we're still continuing to check for cracks and broken parts. Slide under. Check your leaf springs. Check your radius rods, grabbing them, making sure there's no loose bolts. Check your air hoses. Verify that none of them are rubbing or chafing. And at this point, we would mark our push rod, mark for our push rod travel on our push rod for our brake chamber. All right, so we're gonna check the tires and check for any irregular wear or any damage, cuts, slit flats, anything like that. Um, irregular wear could be an indicator that there is an issue with the bearing, possible bearing failure or it could be an alignment issue where it's only wearing on one side. If you see irregular wear, you want to check and just verify that your bearings are good and verify that your alignment is good. And we're going to come to the hubcap area. We're going to look for any noticeable leaks. We see a little bit of grease here, but this is not anything that needs to be taken care of. If it's worse than this and it's out to the spiders, this, this area here, then you want to look at replacing that hubcap gasket. We also want to check the lug nuts, verify that they're all here, and verify they're not loose. I physically like to touch the parts just to verify that they're not loose so I don't trust my eye whenever I'm checking these things. We're going to continue the same thing on all, inspect all of our tires, and we're going to continue around checking for any cracks in the frame area. Look here. Verify you see no cracks. You're going to check your twist lock. Verify that it functions and it has its safety retainer. That it locks, works properly. Now look at your wires inside here and just verify you have no issues with any of your wires. No melting, burning, or anything like that. We verify the light is working. Continue around. Checking all of our lights. Again, checking for any cracks or any damages that you might see in any of the wiring or frame cross members, anything like that. Verify your tag light works. Verify you've got reflective material. It's supposed to be the full length of the bolster, but generally they only want it where you can actually put it. We couldn't actually get it right here, so this is fine. You have to end in red on both ends of your bolster, left and right. And you can't have white reflective tape or any other colored reflective tape within three inches of any light. So if it's a red light, you can't have any white reflective tape near it. If it's a yellow light, you can't have white or red within three inches near it. Okay, and also you want to verify that there's reflective material on the ICC bumper. It doesn't have to end in red like the bolsters do, but it does require reflective material. Here we see a greaser. Just so you see, we always want to use our greasers if they're there. Sometimes you get in a situation where it may not have a greaser. At that time, I usually dig the grease out here, put my grease gun on that hole, and it'll grease the inside of that twist lock as well as the greaser. We make our way around. Again, checking lights. Verifying the twist lock works. And that the latch works. And that there's no damage to the wires inside. Again, checking. Uh, tires, checking your lug nuts, your cleats, 
making sure there's no gasket leaks and no missing bolts from the hub to the drum. Checking the tire for damage. No damage. Do the same on all four wheels. Then we continue to make our way around and verify that there's no damage. See your wire harness? You want to verify that it's not in a situation where it could be loose and get pinched or anything like that. Continue making your way around. Again, each leg, check your boxes, check all your bolts, verify that none of them are loose, and then you're going to grease this leg here, just like the other side. Two grease spots, one on top, one on bottom. To verify there's no parts that are going to fall off or that are loose, continue around. Continue checking both sides coming through looking for any cracks or any damage to any of the frame members. Checking here. Making sure your, your frame to your bolster has no cracks. Your gussets, these are your gussets. Make sure they have no cracks. And then back around to the twist lock. Verifying that you either have a reflective light or a reflector is required per FMCSA. Then back around to this twist lock or this push pin. Verify it functions that it's not going to fall out and works properly. Again, the grease cert is in here. You want to look inside there? There's your grease cert. Can you see it? This is where you're going to grease this push pin. Again, if there is no grease cert on that push pin, you're going to come around here, slide it out, make sure you get plenty of grease in there, and then move it back and forth to lube it up. Now, we're back at the front of the chassis. We've done our major inspections and verified there are no major issues. Everything seems to be working properly other than the minor air leak, which will be addressed later. Now, we're going to apply our brakes. This is when we're going to do our brake stroke measurement. Check. Now, we're going to check the push rod stroke. So when you do your push rod stroke, you're going to place the plate back up here and you see our original mark. You can make a second mark, but I find it more efficient to just measure off the plate. So I'm going to measure from the plate to our mark and we see that it is a 1 and 5 eighths stroke. This will be the same on all four wheels. This is how you're going to measure each brake stroke for each uh, section left front right front left rear and right rear yep here you go so we're gonna go back to the registration that I mentioned earlier we just want to verify that this registration matches this plate so we can see the license plate number is 4JD4091 which matches the plate 4JD4091 this registration matches this paper or matches this chassis it's good to go also I didn't mention about the mud flaps. You also want to verify that it has mud flaps and that the bolts are tight and intact. Pause. Okay, so after I've checked everything and done any necessary tire repairs, we replaced one tire that was damaged previously. Now I'm going to hook up my standoff. This keeps me out of danger when I'm airing the tires. It allows me to hook the air up and step away. We've got a regulator that allows us to air to a certain tire pressure. This isn't hooked up because this is just for demonstration, but this is the process we use to air tires. We're going to hook this one, this tire, I'm not excited. This here, and this here. And then I'm going to step away and I'm going to let it air to the regulated pressure, which is 90 PSI. Okay, I just wanted to correct the placement of the standoff. I had it next to the tires and that's still in harm's way. So when we do the, use the standoff, the requirement and expectation is that it be away from the tires, out of the direct line of fire of the side of the tires. To protect you and anybody else, we don't want anybody standing next to the tires when we're airing the tires. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to cover, just because I didn't really say anything about it, 
So this chassis is equipped with ABS. We have our ABS valve here. And our ECU, this is the control for the ABS. This is the ABS light. To check it, we're gonna put, pre uh, put power to the ABS. We wanna verify that the ABS cycles, which we heard it cycle, the two clicks were the ABS cycling, and verify that this light comes on and goes off. You see the light went off so the ABS is functioning properly. So once we've, done, gone through our, we've gone through our whole process of the FMCSA, we're going to come to a uh, check or adjust brake travel. This is where we're going to record our pushrod travel from the process I showed you earlier when measuring brake stroke. The lower line is the brake pad thickness. This is very important that we get have both of these measurements and that they're accurate. The pushrod travel has to be accurate with an eighth of an inch. The only way to do that is to do the, to follow the process that I showed you when measuring pushrod travel. We go through, check all of our areas. We have suspension, coupling devices, locking devices, slider assembly, frame, landing gear, which would be the legs, the electrical, wheels and rims, tires, lubrication, which would be greasing the chassis. And then documentation and any other items like FMCSA stickers, FMCSA forms, and things like that. Make sure the plate's there, make sure that it's not out of date, fill out all of your information, put your VIN number, your chassis number, your license plate, and the state that it's issued in and the year of manufacture okay I wanted to also go over the FMCSA form one more time just to verify that everybody sees what I'm talking about these are our brake stroke measurements we want to make sure those are accurate with an eighth, a, eighth of an inch so when you measure your brake stroke this is where you're going to record it underneath it is the brake pad thickness you also want to measure those and verify that those are accurate this is your VIN number where you're going to put your VIN number, your unit number, the license plate number, the expiration date, and the state that it was issued. This is the year that the chassis was manufactured. And these are all of your components that you want to check from brake system, suspension, your coupling devices, which would be your, your kingpin where your truck would hook up your locking devices, which would be your push pins, your handles, and anything that secures a container to the chassis. It's your slider assembly. This chassis did not have a slider assembly, but some have a slider at the rear tandem and also a slider at the uh, to extend the chassis to make it a longer chassis. So you see a 40 or 48 foot chassis, uh, it will also have a slider. Your frame, checking any frame damage, cracks, or anything like that. Your landing gear, which is your legs. Your electrical, which would be all your lights, your power to your ABS, any shorts or anything that you would have with your electrical system. Your wheels and rims, which would include your tires here. Lubrication, which is greasing the chassis. And then documentation, which would be your stickers, your FMCSA stickers, your FMCSA form and your stencil on the front of the chassis whenever you do an inspection and then your signature and your date